Yeah, start it now. Okay, great. So Synbic has a tradition. Uh, I'm, if you haven't seen me in the previous seminar, I'll, I'm Sophie, the chair of Synbic this year. And Synbic as a society has a tradition of building teams for various synthetic biology competitions. And every second year, this competition is iGEM, the most important uh, and biggest uh, and most rewarding competition of its kind. And this year, it happens to be an iGEM year. So we're hosting this meeting to introduce it in a competition. Imperial has a strong history of iGEM teams. There have been winners of the grand prize in 2016, which we'll show you later in a moment. So I propose that first uh, we have a guest here, Olivia, who was a member of the last year's iGEM team. Unfortunately, last year has been special. So a lot of adaptation can be had to be made for the competition. So I suggest that first Olivia tells you for her first person experience uh, with iGEM. And then later I'll walk you through the specifics of this year competition the timeline and the application process. So um, passing on to Olivia. Uh, yeah, hi everyone. I'm Olivia and I was the team lead last year for the 2020 um, team for Imperial and I'm now doing a PhD at Oxford. Um, and so basically the way that things kind of went on last year is we started out like a normal team um, with a um, kind of following the general structure. Um, in the end, we settled on a software project because we didn't have too much access to the lab. So it ended up being um, kind of still following this similar sort of structure of a typical iGEM year, even though it was not as lab based as it maybe normally would have been. Um, so I guess I, for those of you who don't really know too much about iGEM, um, I'll maybe just start off telling you a bit more about what it is. So at the beginning, um, each teams are usually composed of um, around 10 to 15 or even 20 team members, um, so like students. And um, there can be multiple team leaders and then there's usually um, a supervisor or two and um, teams also tend to have advisors that are PhD students or postdocs. And so we were around 11 people and uh, we had, I think, four advisors that were PhD students and um, then we had one main supervisor so that was kind of what our team was structured like um, and we also went through the same selection process that you guys will hear more about from uh, Sophie later um, which Imperial is able to do because there's so much interest in iGEM um, and this is also why uh, Imperial tends to do fairly well in iGEM competitions. Um, but yeah, so uh, at the beginning of the competition, which is around January to February, teams kind of start getting together and um, doing some initial brainstorming. And by around March, um, it's kind of good to have like a supervisor chosen. Um, I mean, I don't know if I should be describing this in, in dates. It might be a little different this year because uh, there are a couple of changes to the competition. Um, but in essence, you don't have to start up knowing exactly who your supervisor is um, it actually kind of makes more sense to settle on some kind of idea that you um, it, you can then select a more appropriate supervisor for so it would make sense for example to select someone that's very uh, biomolecular oriented if you're if you're doing like a completely um, health related project or even a startup project and um, so yeah so uh, most of the, the bulk of the competition runs through the summer and the um, the main sort of deadline is or the, the so-called jamboree is at the end of um, October and that's when you have your presentation and you also submit your wiki which is kind of like a website that documents everything you did. Um, you can see all the past uh, teams wikis on um, they they always get frozen and kind of like archived, so uh, you can go to our past wiki, which um, maybe I can send the link in later for. Um, but yeah, that's also a nice way of kind of being able to browse projects of that might be similar to yours or gain inspiration from what people have done in the past and make sure you're not kind of like repeating a project that's 
been um, been done. So um, for for us, I think it was um, we we did actually have quite a bit of time in the lab in the end because um, we found space at this uh, this place called Open Cell, which is now sadly shutting down. Um, but it's kind of like a communal London city lab that anyone can really like sign up for and um, participate in. And there's a couple of these, um, but you shouldn't have too much trouble finding a lab at Imperial this year, hopefully, uh, if COVID permits. Um, so yeah, we uh, we did a software project and it was about um, automating the assembly of DNA with um, lab automation, so with liquid handlers, um, from the company Opentrons, which I don't know if you guys have heard of, but um, this is actually an iGEM project from around 2014 that spun out as a company and um, is now quite a successful, like um, fairly open source, like still open source, but also well-funded um, liquid handling robotics company. Um, so that's another aspect of iGEM is a lot of projects do um, either go on to like there, there's a big sort of um, an entrepreneurial aspect of it. So the whole team, team formation and brainstorming um, sort of structure mimics that of kind of how accelerators work. And it's kind of supposed to prepare students for um, the eventuality that they they might want to take some of their research or some invention um, into the industry sector. And that's definitely something good to embrace and just learn about because the whole competition is, is structured in with with that in mind. Um, you usually have to look for funding and you have to do some marketing in the form of um, human outreach and you have to um, make sure that your idea is kind of proof by uh, testing it continuously. So um, a fair number of teams every year kind of spin out into companies and then um, there's also a lot of teams that try to publish their work as a paper. Um, we tried to do this as well, but we just didn't have enough time in the lab to get the necessary results. So um, yeah, that's kind of um, a very brief, broad overview for me, I guess. Uh, I don't know if you guys want to ask questions at the end, That I'm happy to uh, answer any questions that you have. Or yeah, if you have questions now, that, that works as well. Um, I don't know how you want to do this, Sophie. I think uh, Monica has a question. Uh, yeah, so, sorry, my question is a little bit more general because I'm really interested in joining the competition and maybe like teaming up with some other interested students. But I have to run off to work at a moment and I'm just wondering this meeting is being recorded so I can watch it tomorrow, like the end, like find out more about the application process and how that actually would look like, right? Um, yeah, of course, uh, this meeting will be recorded and we'll share it so you'll have a chance to watch it later. Are you on the mailing list? Uh, Monica? Uh, yeah, sorry, what did you say? Uh, are you on our mailing list? Uh, yes, 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 I am. Okay, so uh, we'll share the link to the tool and like the application form and everything you need to apply. No worries. Perfect. Okay, great. That sounds awesome. And Olivia, could you please uh, tell uh, what is the main value uh, for you as a student? At the, what was the main value that you got from participating in iGEM? Um, right. Yeah. So iGEM is a really ex uh, well-respected competition around the world and I think it definitely helped people from my team kind of get um, PhD program positions and um, kind of it does look really good on on CVs. It's also a very good sort of um, like I said kind of introduction into entrepreneurial thinking and but beyond that just running your own project and kind of relying only on yourself and your uh, teammates is a really, really good learning experience. So I learned a lot about kind of um, working together with other people and kind of managing um, how to work together best. Um, and splitting up tasks, it 
and that, that sort of thing. Like you kind of undervalue it, but it's um, it's really important. Um, and also generally, so one of the reasons that it's really well respected for uh, PhD programs is because it's such an intense research project and um, many PhD programs really care that you have uh, about how much research experience you have. So yeah, it's, um, it's, it's really good sort of introduction to those sorts of things, but also to, um, yeah, whether you want to go into academia or into industry, I think it's, it's a really good experience. Well, thanks a lot, Olivia. Um, does anyone else have any questions before we proceed? Yeah, I was going to ask one more question. Um, what was your biggest takeaway and what did you enjoy most about the competition? Um, that's a good question. Um, I think we I probably enjoyed uh, just being able to, you're kind of proud of what you do at the end. Um, after many months of hard work uh, and it's, you have something that you've kind of built yourself with people that you've gotten to know very well, who you kind of consider friends. Um, and so that's really nice. Um, it's it does also kind of introduce you to how difficult research can be and how you can deal with things not working and it's kind of be crafty and um, kind of forces you to think a bit more individualistically compared to the really structured um, research and studying that you have at Imperial in a very sort of bubble-like environment. So um, yeah, you, you have to, it, it makes you more inventive and kind of creative as, as you go along. Yeah, I really like that. Uh, thank you so much, Olivia. That's very insightful. Really grateful for you coming here. So if nobody else have any questions or if you have some along the way, feel free to um, type it in or like raise your hand. So then um, let's go through the what happened going to be actually happening this year, the deadlines and what we're expecting from the team. I'll share my screen for that. Where is this? One moment. Can everyone see the screen? Yes, we can see the screen. Is it full screen or is it like? Um, yeah, here it is definitely full screen now. So you're going to be participating in IGEM 2022 starting next year. So don't worry if you see deadlines related to IGEM 2021. That's last year competition. We're going for the following and why are we starting so early? There are good reasons for it and we will explain now. So first, Olivia already explained uh, the, the nature of IGEM. You have an independent project with the idea you develop yourself. The work is not limited to you. You have to engage, collaborate, ask advice externally. It's all up to you. A lot of creativity is involved. There's also an important component to the competition called human practices, where you have to reach out to communities and do, do science uh, communication work and stuff. In the end, um, well, apart from the, the fact that it looks good as a CV, iGEM is a huge community, huge network, which you get a chance to build. They have a podcast, lots of online resources, the after iGEM program as well. There's a, a lot of IGEM teams do uh, end up uh, being flourishing startups and businesses. I think Ginkgo Bioworks, a uh, very, very big company now, has been founded for IGEM alumni. Well, you also get a photo with uh, George Church, one of the founding fathers of uh, Synbio, and see the one of the previous Imperial IGEM teams uh, on the giant jamboree in, in the US, in the left. And on the right, you see Equilibrium, a team that won the grand competition prize in 2016. And the giant jamboree is indeed, uh, it is actually giant, and it's the main symbi event of the year, one can say so. So this is the official work cycle for iGEM. 
so you started you register in winter before then ideally you would already have uh, done some fundraising and brainstorming you register your team you find a supervisor and advisor then over summer you work in the lab and actually make things work you create your wiki that is a website do your uh, public engagement projects and Finally, um, late, usually late October, you attend the Giant Jamboree, which was normally held in the U.S. Now they decide to, in Boston, now they decide to move it around. In 2020, it was meant to be in Paris, but well, it was, ended up being online. I don't think there was information yet as to where next year's is going to be. If someone knows, um, feel free to communicate. And yeah, being enthusiastic throughout is extremely important because that is what will get you through the competition and will allow you to have fun, to learn and get this valuable experience and achieve the best results. So um, participation in iGEM alone is really costly. And the registration fee alone is just to register the team is uh, $5,500 uh, and just, just to participate and it's been growing every year. Then you need to pay a further two grand to enter the jamboree. Plus, um, there are travel costs, uh, so the flights or, tr or trains and the hotel, depending on where it is. In that sense, if it's in Europe, that's uh, easier for you. But then you don't get to visit the US, so there's a trade-off. And of course, just, we need you will need salaries to support the students working over summer. That's why we're building the team early, since a lot of fun. Drazen will have to be done to ensure uh, the best experience. We're currently negotiating with some potential sources of funding, but um, it alone will likely not be enough to cover everything. This is something you need to think about a lot. Think about who you can contact and make a case. Another important caveat about IGEM, it is very demanding, time consuming. Late hours are quite common especially by the end, so towards the approach of deadline. It's an absolutely full-time commitment. It's not realistic to expect to combine it with other internships, jobs, engagements. If um, next year you're also going, say, on a year in industry, you're abroad, or you have like a master's or PhD program that may be starting before iGEM ends, this will also be really difficult, practically uh, well, impossible to combine without sacrificing one of it. So please consider it. Yeah, so Inga, would you like to speak about that? Or uh, yeah, sure. Um, I don't actually have click rights. Um, so okay, I guess I'll, I'll just have you. to like, tell you to click. <laughs> um, so yeah, please go ahead, click. <laughs> um, so Imperial is um, actually, sorry, could I perhaps request control? Um, and then I think it might be easier to present. Um, how do I do that? Oh yeah, hello. Works. Um. I think it's just because it's on my screen and on my in my browser, that's, uh, I think, it's better for you to share your screen. Yeah, of course. So, can you see my screen? I see myself. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so um, then uh, where we left off, apologies for that little mishap. Um, so the Imperial iGEM 2022 team is actually one team, and this is predominantly due to funding. However, there's no strict group limit, uh, but we do look for approximately 12 people to consist of the team. Um, to support the team, we'll also be having at least two academic supervisors. But as Olivia mentioned, the best way to go about this is to first have an idea and then follow up with potential advisors who are experts in the field. Also, when selecting our team, we select for a diverse background of individuals. This means not only um, 
from who they are, but also in terms of skill set. So we're looking for people who have either wet lab skills, um, dry lab skills, so coding, modeling, uh, design and branding. A website um, will also be, be made, the wiki website, and also human practices to reach out and to get a better understanding of how to raise funding and capital. As was mentioned earlier, it's a quite important aspect of the entire competition. And then uh, moving on to the timetable or the timeline. So as uh, was mentioned earlier, this year we're starting uh, slightly earlier um, in all of our introduction talks and also the selection criteria. So the first talk you're attending today is the 14th of October, and this is when applications will be opening. So we will also be sending out um, a questionnaire to be filled in and will also require your CV to be sent over. This may be done to the Synvic um, email, which we'll share with you later. Um, then the next deadline is the 25th of October. This is the application deadline for the CV and the form to be handed. Um, we also have our calendar, which is set up to create reminders for you so that you don't forget this deadline. And then uh, that same week, we'll have on the 2nd of November an in-person selection or the week after, apologies, the 2nd of November, an in-person selection um, with a judging panel consisting of Imperial staff, iGEM alumni, industry representatives, and Imperial um, Syndic committee members. And then on the 5th of November, we'll be sending out team confirmation emails and you can get started and meet your team. Um, as well as this, after that, uh, timeline um, we'll be having uh, following meetings giving more information and advice on funding on lab skills on uh, how to collaborate as a team but that will all come um, after that deadline so this is the predominant focus of right now and so what are the next steps the next steps are getting membership at the union website uh, following, uh, so subscribing to the mailing list, uh, which may be done with the QR code on the right hand side and subscribing to Instagram uh, on Synvic and the events calendar, um, as well as um, filling in the form that will be sent out via the mailing list and um, then sequentially um, handing in your CV also to the mailing list. So thank you very much. Are there any questions? Just go back to the meeting. Um, hi, I was wondering how we can get the events calendar link. Right, so um, I'll have that right here uh, in the chat and it is yes, also on the it. slides. So the slides will also be uh, shared with you um, if you want, but I'll add it in the chat now. Okay. We also made we also made a WhatsApp uh, group ch group chat. I think uh, we could send a link in here as well for all the members. I'll just fetch it from Slack. Yeah. So that has been pasted now in the chat, and we'll also be sending it in the WhatsApp. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? Um, I have a question. Is it okay if I say it? <laughs> yeah, sure. Go for it. Sure. I was wondering about, um, so for example, if somebody is in their final year, so there is a chance that, you know, when it comes to continuing their education, they might be away from Imperial. And I see that uh, the kind of the item circle uh, extends to September and October. Um, is it possible to be a part of the team, even if that person happens to be outside of Imperial at the time? Um, yes, it is. It is totally possible. The only thing like if you have a master's or like a PhD or something like a job starting, then think about how you will combine that uh, because that might be tricky. But uh, per se, it's not at all forbidden. Um, and I have one more completely irrelevant question. Um, you had a seminar um, this week. Is that po is it possible to rebudge that somewhere? Uh, no, unfortunately, we did not record that one. Sorry. 
OK, thanks. Uh, someone else had their hand up just before that. Yeah, uh, I just want to know how much support uh, do we receive from our college in terms of funding and getting advice? Well, in terms of advice, uh, well, pretty much unlimited. You can approach anyone with expertise for advice. In terms of funding, so the CDC this year, they sponsor a different university every year. So while they sponsored Imperial previously, this year decided to sponsor iGEM. But potentially you can approach um, individual members and ask for their collaboration and support. It will be up to you to approach and decide. Yeah, your supervisor might have funding, but um, they might also uh, not. Usually Imperial is quite, was quite generous to iGEM teams, which is why they only run it every two years or so. Um, but yeah, your, your supervisor might have funding. OK, thank you. Um, anything else? Um, sorry, I don't think I'm able to view the chat because it says it's only available to team members. Oh. Okay, sorry about that. I don't know how to fix it. Apologies, um, just to confirm, is this for the chat or is this for the calendar? The chat. Well, you would have sent the calendar in the chat, but I'm not able to open the chat channel. Um, but if you emailed it, that would be fine on the mailing list because I think I am on that. Yeah, OK, OK, we'll do that. Sorry Thank for you. inconvenience. OK. I think um, then that's it for today. Uh, we'll share the recording most likely on our YouTube channel, I think. Thank you very much for coming here. If you have any further questions, feel free to contact us uh, directly by any of our channels. I uh, wish you a pleasant evening. Thank you. Oh, yeah. There's a hand. Yeah, Edward? sorry, uh, I was a bit like uh, out of the room just now. So can you like later share this PowerPoint in the Teams just in case I want to read the information in it? Yes, thank you so course. much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all for coming. Have a nice evening. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.